I'm not happy. I am not happy. I'm 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 not happy. It's a phrase that's quite scary. It's a phrase that you never really hear. It's a bit taboo to say to yourself, but also to others. If a friend says that to you, then you're kind of like, here we go. Oh, who's this depressing motherfucker? They're gonna just cry, they're depressed. There must be something wrong with them. If your partner says that to you, then it's also like, whoa, we're gonna break up. You can't really say I'm not happy in your group of friends or in your relationships. It scares the fuck out of people and it's not widely accepted. I think this is a great subject to talk about, especially in quarantine. Admitting that you're not happy, there's actually nothing wrong with it. Because you're supposed to be happy all the fucking time. And that is really impossible. How do we increase the chance of us having more days that we are up than less days? Who gives you advice on your own happiness? They must be really close or actually give a fuck. It's something that you have to work on yourself. So we wake up and we feel energized, we feel like we want to go get it, or we feel love, or we are also helping others feel like that. I think answering the question of happiness is going to be a bit impossible. How can we start to work towards our own level of happiness? There's been a lot of studies about mental well-being and happiness, but they all have different rules and different sets of ideas, and I want to consolidate that to one. What can we start doing today to build a better rhythm? Rhythm. Rhythm, ponder happiness. So I want to call this the creative happiness formula. Here's the creative happiness formula. A habit forming planner to help you plan your day and reflect. Let's dive into some of these happiness themes. The antidote of self-centered attitude, altruism. The moment you give authentically, without wanting anything in return, the pain and suffering will disappear. You see, what stands between us and achieving even our most ambitious dreams has far less to do with possessing some magical skill or talent far more to do with how we approach problems and make decisions to solve them. And because of the continuous and compounding nature of all those millions of decisions that we face on a regular basis, even a marginal improvement in our process can have a huge impact on our end results. The clearest message that we get from this 75-year study is this. Good relationships keep us happier and healthier. And to have people realize that they're naturally creative, you know, and that those natural people should let their ideas fly. That they should achieve what Bandura calls uh, self-efficacy, that, that they can, you can do what you set out to do, and that you can reach a place of creative confidence. You have to be able to break out of where you came from. Every desire you have is an access where you will suffer. So just don't focus on more than one desire at a time. The universe is rigged in such a way that if you just want one thing and you focus on that, you'll get it. But everything else, you gotta let go. Today, neuroplasticity reveals how a consistent gratitude exercise works to physically remap the connections among our brain cells, to literally reform the subconscious mind. Watch your mind. Watch your mind all day long. Watch what it does. Not judge it, not try to control it, but you can meditate 24-7. Meditation is not a sit down, close your eyes activity. Meditation is just basically watching your own thoughts like you would watch anything else in the outside world and say, why am I having that thought? Does that serve me anymore? What's the one thing we're all chasing after? Is happiness. Happiness is the point. Happiness is the ultimate accomplishment. Happiness is a choice. If you believe it's a choice, then you can start working on it. And how can you be good at something if you don't practice it? Practice. 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 Well, Confucius had a great saying, you know, every man has two lives. And the second starts when he realizes he has just one. 